Hey guys, I sure come back to you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. I'm happy to have you here for another champion guide, this time on Melga Steel Girdle. She is a dwarf in epic uh, rarity, a spirit affinity champion. Uh, Marley says, I must say, Glitia seems to be a boring champion in Raid, or the most boring champion. We did a guide on Glitia, uh, you know, about what, a month ago now. I'm losing track here on the channel. Uh, don't be shy there. Her bottom is really nice looking, so you said it, Marley, not me, right? Uh, <laughs> and she requested a, a wish list. Uh, for Melga, as well as a few other really good uh, suggestions here. Another another time, Marley, coming in for the Melga guide. And then we have Doug, says, Hey, Ash, uh, a champ I really uh, haven't done a dedicated video for is Melga, and that is indeed true. And he ends up adding that in. Of course, Doug, of course. Uh, main thing I'm looking for, if you could see the masteries for Faction Wars, there are two setups from Hell Hades and one from Scratch, all slightly different and good arguments for both ways. Well, I'm, I haven't looked at theirs, but I'm going to go ahead and show you mine in today's video. Uh, but first, you know, Melga, what, when was she added to the game, right? You can see here, thanks to yumilove.com, uh, back in January 14th, 2021, so uh, two and a half years ago almost. Man, time flies. She was added with these other champions, Iron Brago, King Jarog, Roxum, uh, Duke the Pierce. We've done a guide on him here on the channel already. Uh, Armina, Sanguinia, Ursula, Ugo, Vogoth. Dude, talk about an epic, just an amazing epic heavy uh update man i don't rem remember them adding as many great epics ever into the game in one batch as this right duck ferric in the fat uh anax is really sneaky good ursula the mourner ugo in vogoth i mean that's in, in, in sanguinia old hormic jorg i mean even the the b level one epics are really 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 good here so yeah plarium uh, add some more amazing epics how about that how about that, guys? Anyway, unfortunately, Dwarf Crypt is closed today, and it opens in three days, and I have had this champion on the agenda for the last couple days, so we're going to go ahead and put this out, but I want to be clear here that I feel like her absolute best use case, Melga, is going to be in Faction Wars, because Dwarf Faction Wars, for me, it was the last faction war that I cleared. I found it incredibly difficult. Uh, I didn't have, you know, all the OP champions that I have now on my account. So I really had to get by with what I did have. I had to rely heavily on Rockbreaker, who I'll do a guide on soon, especially if you guys want to see one. Uh, but Melga would have been an absolute just dream come true, not to be too hyperbolic, for that faction war. Uh, she's a great champion. So let's go ahead and talk about what makes her so special, what makes her so unique, and why I am a fan of this champion. I'm on the mini account here, so it was previously free to play, but I did spend a few dollars, not a ton, but just to get some silver when I was broke so I could put out the content to you guys. So I'm just going to refer to it as the mini account instead of the free to play account from now on. Uh, but, you know, close to free to play, I guess, right? On a budget, on a very limited budget. Inspiring violence on her A1 attacks one enemy, has a 75% chance when booked of removing a random debuff from a random ally. Cannot remove debuffs from this champion, HP based champion, a really solid amount of base HP and 20k. So really, really solid there. So a pretty good A1, right? I mean, having that one debuff cleanse just going off every time she uses her A1 is a really nice to have uh, addition to her kit. On sheer grit, her A2 ability places a shield on all allies, 20% of this champion's max HP and then a continuous heal as well on all allies for two turns. Continuous heal is a really great way to heal your team, obviously, in the game, and the shield is based on her HP, so it's a really solid shield because her HP at 20.5k really does scale well. So, a great ability here, right? And then on the revival, Glorious Return. Revive two random allies of 20% HP, 20% turn meter, which is really weak in terms of the... It's great that it's two random allies, right? Like a Caden-type revival ability, uh, but 20% HP and 20% turn meter is not the best stats. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you guys, but it is a revive nonetheless, especially with dwarves where we really, really needed a reviver to help a lot of players for Faction Wars. So she served that purpose back two and a half years ago. Also plays a shield buff on the revived allies for 30% of their max HP. So at least they get a decent shield to help them stay alive so we can go ahead and get back to that A2 and, you know, refresh that shield and start healing them up as well. She also brings HP in all battles by 15%. It's really not the best aura. You can get that, you know, at least in dungeons from your, uh, from your, or actually you can get that from your starting champions, right? So 
The aura, nothing to write home about, but still, it's I guess it's nice to have, I guess, right? Uh, so there she is. A fairly simple kit here, guys. Before we get into how I have her built on this account, man, dude, the pop-ups are just killing me here on this account. Golly. Uh, I will be doing as many guys as possible on the, the mini account as well, guys, just to kind of supplement uh, the you know main account, which can be pretty, uh, pretty end game. Let's put it that way. Uh, like in yesterday's video on Mithrala, for example. So I'm trying to, you know, hear your feedback and trying to do my best to uh, to accommodate everybody who watches the channel. So where can we use this champion? Well, I, as I mentioned, Faction Wars is really where she is going to shine. So we'll definitely rate her a five in Faction Wars. Campaign locations for Nightmare Campaign. She's actually a really, really good champion. She's not going to be a speed farming champion, uh, but nice for support, right? Nice for support with that nice uh, beefy shield in the heels as well. For Demon Lord, I guess in the, in the early game, she would be good in Demon Lord. Arena D defense, I suppose. Uh, but really for me, it's it's all about the dungeons. You know, I would give her like a four or a five, maybe a five in Ice Golem's Peak. I think she's great there in Dragon's Lair as well. Uh, Minnow, sure. You know, if you need support there, look no further. Uh, in the keeps, just depending on affinity and stuff like that. Hydra, uh, a 4.6. Not a bad Hydra champion. Of course, she's not going to bring any damage, but she does have, you know, again, the, the heal and the shield and the revive, right? I, I would say an early to mid game Hydra support champion. So I'll give her like a good rating there, a three. I don't know. When I say three, it sounds pretty crappy. But when you say good, it sounds pretty serviceable. <laughs> so I'm not going to go very good. I'm going to be realistic and go good there uh, on her rating. But again, a dungeon champion who can definitely help you out in multiple other areas uh, in the game. Faction Wars dungeons. And then especially in the early to mid game, like I am on this account, she can help you in a bunch of a variety of different areas. Especially I have Sil the Drake. We'll talk about this more later on in the video. But I have Sil the Drakes as well in this account. But it's nice to have a reviver. Uh, who also can heal and do support, right, for Force Affinity mobs, because there's a lot of Force Affinity, you know, dungeons in this game. So that's another reason that I love Melga and why I invested uh, in her on this account. Another reason is, is because I pulled a three-star uh, Black Awakening on her. So I'm like, you know what? I think it's a sign. Let's go ahead and do a guide on her. So you'll see I am Silver Baroque right now on the account. So it's really unfortunate. I have level 12 on the banner HP though. I have HP on the amulet and I have uh, defense on the ring. We don't want to totally neglect or ignore defense on this champion, but we do want to scale her HP as high as possible. That way we can get more out of our shield on our A2 ability, right? And more survivability out of our reviver is always a good thing as well. We do have uh, HP percentage, I'm sure, on the gauntlets. Yep. We have HP percentage on the chest, and we have speed on the boots, right? So again, pretty basic build. I really want to upgrade this helmet as well, uh, because, you know, level 14, we want the HP. We want more HP. But even despite not having everything upgraded in terms of our accessories and our helmet on this champion, we still have a very respectable 62k on the HP, given where I am in my account progression. We also have 197 on the speed. So in terms of priority, she's fairly easy to build HP and speed. That's basically it. That's why we have uh, two speed sets on her and in a mortal set. I, you know, I basically put my favorite sets on her and for this champion, Immortal and Speed. You know, those are the sets that I would consider on this champion. If you want to go crazy, and if you are, for whatever reason, utilizing her in Hydra Clan Boss, you could also consider maybe like Stalwart and maybe consider uh, Relentless. But again, I think that Speed and Immortal are probably just the way to go for this champion personally. Uh, so... These are the, I don't know, again, to whoever was commenting about, uh, for Doug, right? I don't know who or, or what the other guys had for their masteries, right? Uh, and, and as we always say, I'm going to say it again, right? Masteries really depend on, on, on you, the user, the team that you have, what you're trying to look for out of this champion. So this is my favorite support, like all out support and healing build for this, or shield build, excuse me, for this champion. Keep in mind, guys. I think it goes, it's worth saying here for new players, especially lay on hands, increase the value of heals as champion cast by 5% does not, I repeat, does not apply to continuous heal buffs. Okay. Really important to know. However, you can get more heals out of your continuous heal to come down and pick up lasting gifts. Okay. So that's a way to get more heals vis-a-vis -vis extending the duration of the continuous heals. So, uh, you can make, I love defense and support, right? Why do I love this build? Well, you know, let's start with the, the tier five and tier sixes. We already talked about continuous heal. It's fantastic. Getting more heals out of the continuous, out of the continuous heal from the lasting gifts and, uh, potentially, you know, extending the shields, right? Uh, 
Uh, we also have timely intervention. Increases champion's uh, turn meter by 20% whenever an ally hero drops below 25% HP. This is great to have on healers and revivers to get them, you know, faster towards their turn when you need them the most, when somebody is in peril uh, below 25% uh, HP, right? But timely intervention synergizes so beautifully with cycle of Reve revenge. Has a 50% chance of increasing the turn meter by 15% when an ally is attacked with a critical hit. Will only increase the turn meter once if an ally receives multiple hits from a single skill. So it's a nice, again, cycle of revenge. Keep in mind, though, in PvE, you know, there's an upside downside, right? Downside is in PvE, most mobs, you know, most bosses only have about a 15% crit rate. So it's not going to be proccing all the time as it would in the arena, but it's still going to be proccing enough to make it valuable in my estimation. Also, while we're at it on the turn meter, rapid response. Really think of this as the trifecta of turn meter uh, improvement on a support champion. Rapid response, timely intervention, cycle of revenge, right? Rapid response is going to have 30% chance of increasing the turn meter by 10% when a buff cast by this champion is removed or expires. So again, think about all this turn meter that we're getting just from these three masteries alone. This is why I love this. And again, to Doug's question, this is why I would prefer this sort of a build for dungeon support and for uh, for faction wars, right? Uh, it's just really, really solid. You could go like all out tank if you wanted to as well. Uh, you could grab some defense, you could grab bulwark and start mitigating damage that your allies receive as well. So there's, there's more than one ways to build any champion, any support champion, right? But this is my, again, uh, favorite build. Of course, we picked up Shield Bearer as well, increased the value of Shield Buffs cast by this champion by 5%. Keep in mind, Healing Savior also affects Shields, as does Merciful Aid. Uh, it affects Shields if they're under CCD buffs. So again, I, I, you know, spending a lot of time here because we did get the request to talk about Masteries a lot, increase the amount of healing and the value of Shield Buffs this champion receives by 5% on Rejuvenation. Uh, really, really love this setup here. Now, of course, what we could do is we could not pick up timely intervention, right? We can go down the support tree, still get, get the extra HP, which is a really good thing, the extra shield, etc. And then we can instead go down the offense tree. We can pick up a little bit of crit rate, a little bit of crit damage. And then basically we could pick up, I wouldn't even pick up life drinker. I would just go single out. I would go bring it down. I would go methodical. And then I would come down to war master. Getting a little bit of damage out of this champion is nice, but for me, the way that I'm using her, especially on this account, it's really a matter of it's a nice to have in terms of damage. But man, I want this champion to just do what she does best, right? It revive, heal, and stay alive, basically, right? <laughs> on my uh, shield them up, heal them up, and stay alive. I'm not worried about getting an extra 200k damage out of her or anything like that out of that A1. So that is why I uh, I prefer this sort of a build. Again, stat priorities, HP and uh, HP and speed, right? We'd love to have her faster than 197, but we have to make Make work and make do with the artifacts that we have on this account. So we talked about everything except for blessings here, guys. I have Chain Breaker on Melga. At the start of this champion's turn, has a chance to remove the CC debuff, stun free, sleep, provoke, fear, true fear, petrification. And we get some extra defense as well, which is nice to have. We get some extra HP, a thousand extra HP, once we get her to four star uh, awakened as well. So that's something to consider. Eventually we'll have that. Uh, but right now we have a 15% chance of removing those debuffs at the start of her turn. It's a really powerful ability, so I'm a big, big fan of Chainbreaker. Other options for this champion might just be, uh, I like for support, kind of reviving type champions. I like using uh, commanding presence on those champions if you don't already have commanding or intimidating presence on your team. Uh, again, strengthen your team's aura by 7.5%. If you don't already have that, that can make a nice difference, uh, you know, uh, having one per team plus we get the extra HP right out the gate, right? So I almost wouldn't mind swapping to this one just for the HP because it's going to definitely benefit our shields. But I'm a big fan of Commanding Presence, so we're going to keep it on there. All right, guys, that is it. Masteries, build, blessings, everything. Let me go ahead and take her into battle. I don't want to buy the stuff, man. I want to show you, you know, essentially... The team I've been using with this champion, and what I want to touch on here is, uh, we touched on all the areas that you could use her, right? I don't feel like I need to show you a hundred battles of Melga Steel Girl or anything like that, but Dragon's Lair, right? The reason I love this champion so much is because I was stuck on stage 25 of Dragon's Lair on this account, primarily because I only had Silda Drakes for a support, like, reviver healer. And of course, I'm going against Force Affinity, and it was just too much for her to keep up with and keep the entire team alive. So I built Melga, and it all worked out. Now, my other problem on this account, I'm sure Syl is definitely usable, depending on what champions you have and stuff. But the other problem on this account is 
all my most used champions. And this is a, a situation that a lot of early game players probably find themselves in, right? A lot of my uh, early game champs are all magic affinity, right? So K I'm still running Kale in Dragon as my poison damage dealer or frozen Banshee. And guess what? They're both magic affinity. I could run like a Cold Heart who I also have maxed out on this account. The problem is, is... You know, Cold Heart actually does not do anywhere near the amount of damage that Kaelin does because of the poisons and the synergy with Dragon. And what I really wanted to do, guys, is beat Dragon 25 so I could finally get a chance to farm up Mythical Gear on my account. I didn't have any other Mythical Dungeons unlocked, any hard versions of Dungeons on this account. So I was able to do that through investing in Melga Steel Girdle. I was also able to make some progress in my Dwarf Faction Crypt. I need to upgrade more Dwarves on this account, so I haven't cleared the Faction Crypt, but it was a massive of help to have the support champion. So what I'm going to do, guys, my time is nothing to write home about at all. But what I want to do is jump in here with this team. I'll just start things out right now. But I'm going to let you go and come back to you guys at the Dragon. And we'll just see how great she is. You know, the thing about this team is, is we're going to lose both of our Magic Infinity Champions uh, quite a bit, especially Kale. He's going to die a lot on this team. And having Melga, who's always going to be nice and healthy, having that constant turn meter, you know, boost from all those masteries that we spoke about, she's going to be able to, you know, keep everybody alive. Look at this. We get continuous heals from UDK and continuous heals as well from Melga. So just a really, really nice option here. Mashald is great on this team as well. I want to point out the elephant in the room, the other legendary that I was lucky enough to pull on this account. Uh, but... Michelle is also kind of replaceable, you know? I mean, he's there because he brings increased speed, which is amazing. He has some CC as well. But in reality, I could replace him with another kind of, uh, like, a, I don't know. Let's see who I could go with here on my account, I'm thinking. I have Alexander the Sharpshooter, and I think with UDK and with Melga, I think Alexander, if I geared him up, we wouldn't have increased speed on the team, which would be a big bummer, but I think we'd have a lot more damage as well from Alexander, and we'd have another debuffer on the squad in case, uh, you know, Duke gets killed or whatever. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is he's not imperative to success on this team, but of course, if you have a Spirit Affinity Legendary, by all means, use them, right? So as you can see, guys, it takes a while. I mean, these mobs are level 350. They have a ton of HP. So I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go for a moment, and I'll come back at you when we get to the dragon. Be right back. All right, guys, here we go. So at the dragon, as I said, this is not going to win any speed run world records, certainly. Uh, but this was it was big for me. It just it put me past that hump, as I mentioned earlier, and got me to dragon uh, hard, which is uh, you know now I have the first shot on my account uh, to actually get my hands on mythical artifacts, which are going to help me out a lot. So as you can see, the team just kind of chugging along here, uh, really relying on on kale primarily to be my damage dealer, which stinks because it's against force affinity. But as you can. See, see some of the poisons enough of the poisons are landing and between melga and udk really just able to do a good job keeping this team alive now i did lose kale but again that's the beauty of having a reviver on the team now i will say one thing about melga and it may have kind of uh, entered into your heads as well now in this dungeon she's great because she's spirit affinity she is really in no danger of being one shot even on a critical hit uh or you know being nuked down right so it's great for that that reason but in many other areas of the game uh besides faction wars besides obviously force affinity dungeons uh still the drakes would be there and has a revival as well she has a stun she has decreased speed decreased turn meter she brings a little bit more because that heal as well on her passive she brings a little bit more to the table than melga does arguably well i don't think it's arguable right i think she does uh so in a lot of areas i still am using so the drakes over Mel melga steel steer bleh, 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 steel girdle <laughs> so uh i will say that that's kind of a caveat to this champion but by no means just for the faction wars alone and for force affinity dungeons i think you could definitely make a case she's great support you saw her on that previous kind of uh rotation right uh everybody was really really low on health she came in there uh and was able to heal them right back up and uh, just a great support there so revivals a bunch of heals as you guys can see in melga steel girdle uh let's go ahead and sell this crappy helmet right 
I mean, I say crap because it's Frost. Does anybody use Frost gear out there? Does anybody? Guys, listen, there's no lore on this champion, unfortunately, so we don't have any of the backstory on uh, Melga, but I feel like today was a pretty thorough guide on a champion who's honestly helped a lot, especially on my mini account, as you guys have seen. Thank you so much for watching until the end. Keep the champion guide requests coming in the comments below. Send us some love and some positive vibes your way, especially if you need it today. And as always, take care, guys.